all of the problems from these videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I upload to YouTube. In fact, on the website, there are over a hundred extra videos that I haven't uploaded to YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. Okay, let's get started with the problem. Let's examine problem 4-1-A. Every problem we do in this chapter has us preparing a production report. And to do it, uh, we will use this template on the right to complete our production report. I give this to my students on tests and I give it to them in class. Your prof may or may not give this to you, but this is a good way to learn how to do a production report is to use this template and you'll get pretty much every piece of information that you need uh, to work from. So, um, Let's get started. Uh, Bertuzzi Tires has three departments. Its first department, the processing department, shows the following data for the month of July. You can see there's some beginning whip and the stages of completion. Um, some, a uh, bit of terminology here. You'll see this term conversion all over the place. Something weird happening with my pen there. Uh, You'll see the term conversion really where everywhere you look uh, in this chapter. And what is conversion? Conversion is direct labor plus manufacturing overhead. So DL plus MOH. Uh, and so I just want you to keep that in mind. So we'll have the, the question will refer to materials and it will refer to conversion. Conversion is just your labor plus your overhead. I'm going to use the pen as little as possible here. It's doing weird things. Um, okay. So uh, that was our beginning whip. Uh, now, when it gives you a stage of completion for beginning inventory, 80% and 35%, those amounts can be totally disregarded. Uh, we're doing the weighted average method for our production report, and that's the only way I teach. Uh, the FIFO method, you would require this information, but the weighted average method, you do not. Uh, we're going to be interested in the stage of completion for ending inventory, not for beginning inventory. Okay, uh, units started, units completed and then some more costs and percentages of completion. So this is all the data we could possibly want. Let's uh, start filling in our production report. So we start with the title, Bertuzzi Tires. We then give uh, the name of the report, production report, and we should say which department, and this is the processing, Oop. And then a date, and the date is pretty simple. It'll be for the month ended July 31st. Okay, so there's our beautiful title, name of the company, name of the report, and the date. Uh, and now we're gonna start filling in. Now, this report is pretty straightforward to fill in because it's really divided into sections. The top section is all about Unit. So everything I've highlighted yellow, I should never see a dollar sign. The bottom section is all about dollar amounts, costs. So two separate sections. And as you're filling this in, just think to yourself, okay, I only want to be dealing with units in the yellow section. So if I put dollar signs there, it's a mistake. And, and so when I'm looking at data from the question, I can ignore most of this, right? I can ignore all these cost information, everything with a dollar sign beside, I'm not gonna deal with. Uh, the bottom half though, I will worry about costs. And those that's where everything with a dollar sign does come into play. So um, we can kind of compartmentalize here when we're answering. And I always find that makes life easier when you can uh, just sort of say, okay, I'm gonna ignore this for now. I'm gonna look at it a little bit later. Um, 
Okay, so units to account for from beginning with. Let's let's just work our way down the chart, and I'll, I'll kind of explain the chart as I go and, and what we're uh, what information we're gleaning from it. But uh, let's let's just go for it. Uh, so the top half, all I'm interested in is units. Units from beginning with. Well, there's whip beginning, and it says units in process eight thousand. That's got to be units from beginning whip. So let's fill that in. Eight thousand. Uh Units started. Let's see anything about units. Oh, there's units started into production. Ninety-four thousand. Okay, ninety-four thousand total units to account for. Well, this seems pretty logical to go eight plus ninety-four. It's one hundred and two grand. Units accounted for as follows: completed and transferred out. Uh, let's see, units completed and oh, there's the next line down. Units completed and transferred out. Ninety-two thousand. And units in ending whip, uh, whip ending units, uh, question mark. Hmm, all right. Well, we're going to have to figure that out. Um, total units accounted for. Now, this is an important moment in our, our template. Let me highlight this, uh, I don't know, green will stand out, maybe blue. Yeah, blue stands out. Total units to account for up at the top. And at the bottom, we've got total units accounted for. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, these two need to match, you would be right. Oops, <laughs> highlighted the wrong line there. Total units accounted for. If you're thinking to yourself, these two lines that I've highlighted, total units do account for, total units accounted for, these two need to match, you would be right. These need to match. So this needs to be 102,000. So I can figure out my ending whip, right? I know that these two lines need to match. Even though I have a number that's missing that's relatively important to me, I, I can figure it out. I can sort of work backwards and go, okay, well, the missing number is ending whip. It's got to be 10,000 because 92 plus 10 is 102. So at that point, we've done the first step. We've done a little reconciliation of our units that have passed through our processing department. Uh, units to account for, the beginning whip and what we started. So we said, look, there's 102,000 units that have passed through our area. I know I completed 92, so how many do I have left in ending whip? Gotta be 10. Um, okay, this is where we get into the concept of equivalent units. And that's a concept I talked about in the intro video to the chapter. But remember what that means, right? It means if I have 10,000 units that are half done, that's the equivalent of having 5,000 units that are done. It's the equivalent amount of work, right? If you uh, are halfway done painting 10 fences, you do 10 fence boards. Right, and you do half of each one, half of the 10, each of the 10 you've painted halfway. Uh, that's the equivalent. If you put your mind to it, you could have just painted five in that same amount of time. So that's the, the notion behind equivalent units. So the units that are completed and transferred out, are they half done? Are they three quarters done? No, they're all the way done. They're all the way done as it relates to material. They're all the way done as it relates to conversion. They are 100% complete. So we'll always just write this number across. We'll say completed and transferred out. Whatever number we have there under physical units, we're going to write the same number two more times under direct materials and under conversion. You'll notice that nothing is going on in this totals column. Absolutely nothing happens in the totals column until we get to costs. Uh, our ending whip though, let's see our ending whip. It says stage of completion, uh, whip ending, work in process ending, stage of completion with respect to materials, 90% complete. So if I had 10,000 units that were 90% done, that's the equivalent of having 9,000 units that were totally done. If I have 10,000 units in, uh, with respect to conversion, which is again, the labor and material, uh, labor and overhead, pardon me, uh, if I have uh, 10,000 units that are 60% done, that's the equivalent of having 6,000 units that were totally done. So our total units accounted for are not, uh, we don't fill that column in, we fill in the total equivalent units. In terms of material, I completed 92,000, 100% done. So I don't worry about half units there, 90% of units there, uh, but I had the equivalent of 9,000 more units uh, in process.
that, that were completed. Essentially, I did all the work of 9,000 units. For labor and overhead, for conversion, I did the equivalent of 6,000 units work plus the 92 that I actually finished. So that's 92 plus six. It means I have 98,000 equivalent units. Okay, that's the first chunk of this thing. Uh, let's continue on to costs. Costs are fairly straightforward. Materials cost, so I, I ignore this physical units column. I move over to materials cost. Materials cost in beginning whip was 110,500. And I'm just taking that from the question, right? Beginning whip, 110,500. Uh, labor and overhead, that's conversion. Conversion is DL plus MOH. So I, I just add the two. I have labor of 33,000 plus overhead of 26,000. Keeping in mind, these are all in dollars. And in fact, I do my first total here. 110 plus 59 is 169,500. Costs incurred during the year, well, costs added to production during the month, that's cost incurred during, <laughs> I guess I could say month here in the template. Uh, most of the time we're looking at months, but cost incurred during the period probably would be the most appropriate. 950, and for labor and overhead, it's 310 plus 170 it's 480 and then i just total all the way around so i say this plus this is this oop let's make this a little bit smaller font maybe there we go make it fit uh in fact i'm gonna have to make all these smaller to make them fit 110 plus 950 I add down total costs to account for 106,500 and I fill that formula across and you can see those are all just totals right total costs and totals on the right totals on the bottom totals on the right the next line and this is the key line of our whole chart this is this is the line if I were running the company I would be most interested in cost per equivalent unit so we have our cost data down here, highlighted in purple. We have our equivalent unit data up here, highlighted in yellow. Cost per equivalent unit, cost per. So cost divided by equivalent unit. So 106,500 uh, divided by 101 gives us 10.5. And I see I've got a lot of decimals there, but 10.5. 539 divided by 98 gives us 5.5. 10.5 plus 5.5 is 16. You'll see I have a lot of decimal places included here. So too should you. You should include a lot of decimal places, especially, I mean, my answer here is even, so it's nice and easy. But if you have an answer that's like 10.4695237, the more decimal places you can include, the better and the easier your life is going to be. We do a little reconciliation at the bottom. You see ours is in this video is going to match perfectly. Uh, but if you have a long decimal answer, Answer, the more decimal places you take, the more likely you will be to make your reconciliation at the bottom work. Okay, so why is this like the key line? Let me highlight it in yellow. Ah, I thought I had it. Let's make it orange. Uh, why is this the line you look at? Remember what we're doing with process costing. With process costing, we're saying we're not going to track costs one unit at a time. You know, if we make pens, we're not going to track the cost one pen at a time. We're going to track all the costs that our department adds. You know, we had 100,000 units come through. We're going to say, okay, the processing department had 100,000 units go through. How much cost, how much did it cost me per unit, kind of on average, right? Like, you know, I had 100,000 units pass through. The average cost of the unit that passed through. And so for this company, whatever Bertuzzi, oh, well, it's tires, uh, they put $16 in cost per unit in this department. Now, we would prepare this for every department. We'd say, okay, our processing department does this. Our packaging department does that. Our shipping department does that. Maybe it's rubber tires, I think, or galvanized. Our galvanizing department does this. Whatever departments we have that these tires have to pass through, whatever processes they have, they would pick up costs from those departments. So uh, in the processing department for Bertuzzi tires, 
the tires pick up $16 in cost. And what I would do is every department, I would prepare one of these reports. I would add them up. I would go, okay, $16 from that department, $3 from that department, $28 from that department, add them all together. That's how much my tires cost. And that information is very important to me. It's not only important for me to know just the processing department because I can say, okay, well, we're our costs per unit this month were 16, last month they were only 15, why are our costs up? So you can kind of critique your department, but it's also important to know in total how much our, our cost per unit is. So that's why we're doing this, right? I know I've kind of uh, taken a long time to get to this justification, but the justification is important. It's important that you understand why we do what we do. Okay, the bottom part, just a little reconciliation. This is useful for our journal entries, but we're not gonna be doing journal entries in this video. Uh, cost of units completed and transferred out. So here's what you do. You take the completed and transferred out units, 92,000. You multiply by the cost per unit, 10.5. Again, completed and transferred out, uh, where are we? 92,000. Multiply by the cost per unit, 5.5. Uh, we'll worry about totaling in a moment. Ending whip, and this is cost of units in ending whip. Cost of units in ending whip. Uh, so I take my ending whip units, 9,000, multiply by my cost per unit, 10.5. Take my ending whip units, 6,000, multiply by my cost per unit, 5.5. Then I sum up all the way around the horn here. And I'm just adding up, getting totals. And you notice something here. There's a nice little double check. So there's a few double checks built in. And let me highlight this in a, I don't know, a bright pink or something that'll stand out. Uh, maybe this red, uh, like a little light, light red. The total cost to account for are 1.599 million. You can see it in this line that I'm highlighting now. And at the bottom, the total cost accounted for are 1.599 million, right? Almost 1.6 million. You can see these two lines matched perfectly. And as mentioned, if you don't round, if you take all the decimal places, these lines always have to match. If you've rounded a little bit, you might be off by a dollar or two or 10. Try not to be, right? You wanna to try to be perfect here. But at this point, we've prepared our production report. Uh, two little reconciliations. At the top, I've highlighted them in blue and at the bottom highlighted in pink. So if all of your reconciliations are working, generally you can be fairly confident that you've got, done a good job. It doesn't mean you got it right, but it's a good sign. Definitely if, if they don't work, those little total costs to account for, total costs accounted for, total units to account for, total units accounted for, if those do not match, you can be pretty sure you screwed something up. If they do match, probably you're on the right track. That's why this is a straightforward topic. Students in my class do very well when I test this. Uh, and I think maybe I'm generous to give the, the templates, um, but uh, students in my class generally do pretty well on these questions. Okay, uh, I'm gonna leave this video here. Stay tuned for our next video.